All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our sixth edition BCBA task list series. Today, we're continuing concepts and principles with operant and respondent extinction. Extinction is a process that we use to try to reduce and eliminate behavior. We typically are going to deal with operant extinction, but having knowledge of respondent extinction might help you in situations where there might be fears or anxieties paired with stimuli in the environment. Either way, we're going to break these ideas down into digestible, easy to understand concepts that we think are going to help you pass your exam. As always, please subscribe if you are not already so you get all of our updates. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. Let's start with what is extinction. Extinction leads to the reduction or elimination of specific behaviors by changing environmental conditions. It's as simple as that. Now, when we think of our principles of behavior change, reinforcement, extinction, and punishment, we know reinforcement is always going to increase. When you're dealing with consequence questions and you see that behavior is decreasing, then you need to ask yourselves, are we handling extinction or is it going to be punishment? Because extinction and punishment are not the same thing. Don't make that mistake that people new to the field often make thinking, well, the behavior was reduced. It's extinction and punishment. Extinction and punishment are two distinct ideas. For you, future behavior analyst, we need to think about operant versus respondent. Operant behavior is what we typically deal with, right? Behavior that operates on the environment and it reacts to consequences. Respondent behavior is less of a factor in what we do, but we still need to know it because a lot of what we do is built on respondent ideas. So with operant extinction, we are withholding reinforcement from a previously reinforced behavior. The key word always for extinction and operant extinction is withholding. You're not adding, you're not removing, you're withholding. And then respondent extinction, excuse me, is removing a condi the condition properties of a conditioned stimulus. Now that seems and sounds more complicated, but we're gonna get into it a little deeper and hopefully clarify what that means. Let's start with operant extinction because it's what we are typically going to deal with. We are withholding reinforcement from a previously reinforced behavior. When we say withholding, we mean nothing is being delivered. Okay. We're not adding, we're not removing because this is not punishment. We are withholding. It leads to a decrease in behavior and hopefully the elimination of behavior. It is not the same thing as punishment. This is important to remember. You are withholding reinforcement not adding or removing something from the environment. When we add something, we call that positive. When we remove, we call that negative. There is no positive or negative extinction. It's just extinction because we are withholding. I know I'm hammering that point home, but it's going to be important, one, to answer questions on your exam, and two, to use extinction properly in practice. For example, a child who receives a snack after throwing themselves on the ground. So the behavior is throw yourself on the ground. The consequence is the child receives a snack. Now, the reinforcer here is that snack. How are we going to use operant extinction? Well, if the child throws themselves on the ground, we don't give a snack. We're not adding anything. We're not taking anything away. We're just withholding the snack for throwing themselves on the ground. That is the key distinction. Few terms that we want to know for operant extinction. Extinction burst is that normal increase in the frequency or intensity of the behavior when extinction starts, followed by a reduction. If we were to graph it, for example, let's say we're starting here. We implement extinction. We expect behavior to increase in frequency and intensity at first because with the behavior is no longer receiving reinforcement then after a while, we can expect it to decrease. So we can plan for these extinction bursts. Spontaneous recovery. Let's say our behavior has all but gone. It's a sudden reemergence of previously extinct behavior. So if our graph looks like this, and we stopped extinction here, 
all of a sudden we might see this blip of behavior. We just need to reintroduce extinction and hopefully it goes back down. Resurgence is very similar to spontaneous recovery, except with resurgence, it happens when we stop providing reinforcement for the replacement. So if you replaced the extinct behavior with something else and that behavior is no longer receiving reinforcement, another behavior in the response class can suddenly reemerge because reinforcement's got to be met or achieved somehow. Now, respondent extinction. A lot of people get overwhelmed with respondent behavior, respondent extinction. Just think about conditioned stimuli, unconditioned stimuli, conditioned reflexes, and conditioned or unconditioned reflexes. Now, I'm using response here just for consistency. When you're talking about respondent behavior, you're typically want to you typically going to want to say reflex. And when you see reflex on your exam, we're dealing with respondent behavior. But since we're talking extinction, I wanted to just be consistent and try to give you a better handle on what we're talking about here. So, respondent extinction involves repeatedly presenting a conditioned stimulus without the unconditioned pair of stimulus. So what does that mean? That means if I had a neutral stimulus and I paired it with an unconditioned stimulus to create a conditioned stimulus, to remove the properties of the conditioned stimulus, I would need to re I would need to present that conditioned stimulus over and over again without this. What that is going to lead to is the reduction of that conditioned reflex or response. Because at this time, these are leading to that conditioned response or reflex. What's going to happen is over time, it's going to reduce until there's no longer properties. So it leads to the weakening and eventual disappearance of that conditioned response in the presence of the conditioned stimulus. And what those people off are these ideas of conditioned responses or re reflexes, conditioned stimuli. Just know that we're just pairing and we're creating the conditioned stimuli, right? So we're taking unconditioned stimuli and pairing them with neutral stimuli and we're creating conditioned stimuli. We can also pair conditioned stimuli with neutral stimuli to create new conditioned stimuli. For extinction, you just have to know that whatever you conditioned, whatever you paired, whatever you created, just present it over and over again to weaken it. Extinction bursts don't typically occur, but spontaneous recovery can occur. The key is to repeatedly present the conditioned stimulus without the unconditioned or paired stimulus. It's as simple as that. So let's say a person jumps when they see a stuffed fox, which was previously the neutral stimulus, because it was paired with a loud sound, which was the unconditioned stimulus, and this became what? The conditioned stimulus, which led to the jumping. If we repeatedly present the fox without the unconditioned stimulus, the jumping is going to go down. That's how you need to think about it. Key takeaways, operant extinction withholds reinforcement from previously reinforced behaviors, respondent extinction, we're presenting conditioned stimuli without the paired stimuli. Simple as that, right? Operant extinction, you're withholding, respondent extinction, present those stimuli without the paired or unconditioned stimuli. Final words, extinction is challenging. We're dealing typically with operant extinction, which can lead to pretty intense extinction burst. If you're going to use extinction, you need to have a, a very strong plan in place, really good training, and full commitment from your team. That includes your technicians, your parents, and whoever else. Extinction must be done as close to 100% of the time as possible to be effective. If not, you're running the chance of just making it worse. If you're going to use extinction, you've got to be smart about it. You've got to be ethical and you've got to be sure everyone is fully committed to doing this 100% of the time. Thanks for watching. Please check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials. Please subscribe. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. See you soon.